Thanks for the support as a channel member, Johnny Comba. Folks, I've got something pretty cool to show you for today's intro, so we just need to, just need to jump down into the corner of the screen for a second. Bear with me. <clears throat> oh, there we go. That, I tell you what, it hurts to do that live. Normally, I get to prepare myself that for a second, but this is what we're looking at. Uh, Westwood Table Soccer. What is Westwood Table Soccer? I hear you cry. Um, he's a content creator on Twitter and on YouTube, and most importantly of all, a Sabutio artist. Why on earth am I showing you a Sabutio artist? I hear you cry. Uh, because of this. Look at that. This is a Kettering Sabutio figure that he's made for us. And what he's actually going to be doing um, over the course of non to Legend this year is every club we go to, he's going to make a custom Sabutio figure for that club. And at the end of it, it's all going to be put together in a display case as a like a unique piece of art to demonstrate the journey that we went on for non to Legend over the course of this year. And even better than all that, at the end of the series, I'm going to give that away to somebody and you'll have this really cool thing to kind of commemorate the series. Um, in the meantime, you should go and check out the YouTube channel, though. It's uh, it's Westwood Table Soccer. I'll link to it down in the description below. There's the Twitter. And here we go. Bear with me. There's the YouTube. Let's just cut his channel trailer off. I'm sure it's brilliant. And um, you can see some of the other Sabutio figures that he's made down there as well. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be a little cool giveaway that we do at the end of the series. So jump over there, show him some love. Follow my example. Drop a subscribe. Hello, welcome to part 11 of Non Lead to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have games against Dover and Sutton in the Vanarama National League. Since we were last with you, we've had, got to be described as a mixed bag of results. When we beat Hartlepool 7-2, I genuinely thought we were just going to romp to the title this year and do back-to-back -back promotions. But then we immediately went away from home to Morecambe and lost. Scraped a draw against Boston. Uh, followed up with another comfortable win over Stockport. It seems like we're a team who on our day can be very good and certainly at home probably are very good. But in these away games, we're possibly a little bit iffy. As a newly promoted team, though, got to say, pretty happy with being in sixth place after seven games with a game in hand as well. So if we win that game in hand... We find ourselves potentially right up into the top four, but a playoff finish for this year would be absolutely fantastic. We're just looking for mid-table. Mid-table would be fine. The fact that we've started so brightly is good stuff. And hopefully we can continue our bright start today against Dover. Like I said, we're good at home. This is a home game. I would be looking for a win here. Uh, we're going with O'Brien in goal. A back four of Dunn, Mayunga, Senior and Mulden. Iqbal and Payne in midfield. Mackendi, Carvalho and Stanley behind Spasov up front. Let's jump into this game and hopefully go and score an absolute pile of goals. Connor Stanley's fully settled in now and he's looking like a real threat on that right-hand side. Alfie Payne is a proper leader and I love having Alfie Payne as part of this team and as our captain again. He's playing in an unfamiliar box-to-box -box midfielder role today because Zidane Iqbal was actually complaining that he's not getting any game time. And to be fair, it's a it's a logical complaint. If you look at his star rating, there's probably three or four cent central midfielders all sat there on three stars and Iqbal hadn't played a game. So we're giving him an opportunity today and he's much more comfortable playing as a playmaker, whereas Alfie Payne can do everything because he's Alfie Payne. Spasov charging forward here with the first shot, or at least the first highlight-worthy shot of the game, but it is straight at the Dover goalkeeper, and uh, the scores remain goalless. Iqbal, nice little interception header there, and McKendy is on it like a shot, trying to get a counter-attack move, and plays it into Spasov. There's a uh, player over there, which I think is Connor Stanley. It's a beautiful pass from Spazov and Stanley running from deep, tucking the ball into the back of the net. It's 1-0 to Kettering. It's a lovely counter-attacking goal. Pass through our entire front three. It all started with Iqbal with that interception. McKendy starts the breakaway, slots it into Spasov, who plays a perfectly weighted pass into the path of Connor Stanley. There's no way anyone's stopping that ending up in the back of the net. And it's 1-0. And as mentioned, that's if the score stays as they are, that puts us up to fifth place. Only three points off top of the table, uh, Chesterfield. And that's still with a game in hand and a better goal difference. So we could actually find ourselves at the top of the league by the end of this episode, assuming we play the game in hand. The reason we've got a game in hand is because of international call-ups, Iqbal being one of them. 
Um, he was away on international duty, so we were able to postpone our game. Spasov's in here. Um, I kind of hoped he was going to square that to Stanley or Carvalho, who were chasing through in the centre, but they were both a little bit late to arrive, so it does end up with a pretty tame shot into the arms of the Dover goalkeeper. Now they've got a chance for a counter-attack of their own just before half-time. They've made it past Senior there, and they're charging forward. Senior is charging back to try and make up for his own previous mistake. Luckily, the shot goes wide and his blushes are spared. Um, let's point the finger and say it's a good opportunity to show how good we are in this second half. Because 1-0, I think we should be looking to do better than 1-0. We're a better side than a 1-0 side. Although, I mean, Dover is sixth in the league. They're, they started the match above us. So maybe we shouldn't be expecting to put seven past them the way we did against Hartlepool. I just want a big performance in a game you can see. It falls to Carvalho here. And it's, I mean, yes, it's from the edge of the area, but it is an open goal. And he just connected with it beautifully. Puts us 2-0 up. It's a lovely finish from Denilson Carvalho. We're just going to have a look at it from the other angle as well. But it's a lovely, lovely finish. Stanley does very well to put pressure on the goalkeeper there. And Carvalho has to adjust his positioning there to be able to hit that back first time. Because if it doesn't go back first time, if he takes a touch, that gives the goalkeeper time to adjust and get back across goal. So Carvalho showing brilliant technique and awareness to stick that into the back of the net. And then Stanley trying to just brute force it into the back of the net from a similar range. This time with a goalkeeper in the way, though, and it does go over the crossbar. Looking at that XG, in fact, looking at all the stats, my word, are we good value for our 2-0? 2.29 on XG. We've had 25 shots to their one. Only seven of them on target, suggesting we maybe need to be adjusting our instructions a little bit to tell the players to maybe try working the ball into the box. We might do that in this second, in this that's 20 minutes or so, or so, just to maybe discourage some of the shooting from range that isn't really being very effective, as we just saw there with Stanley. Whitaker's going to come on on the left for McKendy, and we're going to bring on we're going to bring on um, Agbon to Homer um, at the back as well. I may as, we may as well do a triple. Let's get Wooten on, um, and we can put Alfie Payne back to the deep line playmaker. Wooten can be the box to box midfielder he's played many times before. There's actually been some football league interest in Wooten. Uh, but the offers we're getting are only around about fifteen, twenty thousand pounds, which it just doesn't seen worth it. If we were getting offered a hundred thousand, we'd perhaps let him go. But uh, we've got quarter of a million pounds in the bank. We don't need to let one of our regular starters out of the team for fifteen grand. It's just, and I realise that's probably a fairly acceptable price at this level, which means we just we have no incentive to sell him. We'll just keep him here um, until someone comes and offers something that we can't refuse. And um, we've let Dover back into the game here in the, over the last few minutes. We had that absolute nonsense where the ball's lo rolling around on the goal line and we just managed to scrape it clear. If that wasn't enough of a warning, they've now e no, they're not equalised. They've got a goal back. It's their first, is it their first shot on target of the game? It was. Um, and we need to we need to sort ourselves out a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna tell them to focus because we are letting we're letting them back into the game. And that's not okay. We've got two minutes left and we need to, I mean, we should really score a third just to take the pressure off for these last few minutes because the last thing we want is to be at risk of conceding a late equaliser. And that's exactly what's happened. And this has been really poor from us. These last five minutes or so of this game, this has not been acceptable. We have thrown this game away. We should have been well away. Three, four goals up based on how we played for the first 80 minutes of this game. And the last 10 minutes or so, it's only looked like being one winner. And it hasn't been us. And that's, I'm very disappointed with what I've just seen. Just, yeah, not happy. We need to make up for that now in this next game because that one, I was already counting my three points there. And as it is, Dover remain above us, even though we've just seen we're a much better team than they are. We can't be that sloppy at the higher level that we're at now. Urgh. Right, folks, I think there might be a situation developing that's entirely of my own creation, um, and that is I'm promising too many players they're going to play because I signed too many players telling them they were going to play, and it's a squad management pickle that I've got myself into. Um, so we've now got Estrada, Iqbal, and Robson, who were all signed to help being told they were going to play in the first team. None of them are, and now I've got to decide whether to play them and cheer them up. But that means the likes of Payne and Stanley and Spasov not being in the team or not play them and have them disrupt the dressing room. Both of those are problematic. It's completely my fault. Don't sign too many players. 
And if you do, don't tell them all they're going to play in the first team. Apparently, players remember this kind of stuff. Rubbish. Um, in other news, um, we have let Colin leave the club. Evelyn's going to be devastated. Uh, but Colin's got a year left on his contract and he's going to be spending that year playing on loan for Kingstonian down in the National League South. So thank you, Adam Colin. Um, Chapman must start, Colin. Not anymore. Um, so the team for this game, O'Brien in goal, a back four of Dunn, my younger senior and Malden, Iqbal and Estrada in midfield, Patterson, Robson and McKendy behind Whitaker up front. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm not against sending a message in a game like this against what I'm calling our senior players, even though they're young and not been here very, very long. Um, certainly Payne and Stanley, I consider senior players based on performances in previous series. They, in this world, they probably don't know why. They don't understand what's going on. But I don't have an issue with dropping them for one game just to st- send a bit of a shockwave through the team, like Spasov, Stanley and, and Payne are all on the bench. There's, there's, firstly, it sends a message, there's opportunity here for everybody. Iqbal and Estrada both getting the opportunity today in central midfield. Um, but also just telling them we can't have collapses like we had in the last game. Alfie Payne was on the pitch as the captain and it all fell apart. I'm never going to switch to work ball into the box again. I'm personally blaming that. <laughs> just get the ball forward and have lots of shots. If we're shooting over the crossbar from 40 yards, they ain't scoring goals at the other end. It's my new method of attacking. Wasted long shots. Just kick the ball far away and it wastes time while they're recovering the ball. Right, corner now. Done with the corner and my younger's there and it's his first goal for the club and we're 1-0 up on 23 minutes. He's just given himself a lovely clap. He's very happy with that. I'd like to think he's clapping done for the beautiful delivery, uh, but the corner comes in. It's an excellent in-swinger. My younger does very, very well um, head into that far post, and it's 1-0 to us. If we win this game, I'll forgive us for what happened in the last one, but of course, going 1-0 up or even 2-0 up doesn't really mean anything based on what we've just seen. Is that a red card? That seems a little bit harsh. It was a clumsy challenge. It didn't look like a red card, but now we're against 10 men for three quarters of this game. This has got to be a big win. But then we said that about the last one. Iqbal out to Patterson, who's got done on the overlap. And now he's got time to pick his spot. Cross comes over. And I think it's Whitaker who's on the end of it and doesn't really get a shot away. And it ends up back with Dunn again. Iqbal now playing it back to Senior, who's looking to get the uh, the attack moving again from the back. Malden with the ball over the top to McKendy, who squares it for Whitaker, who does get a shot away this time. But it's blocked by the Kettering defender and goes just wide. <laughs> don't, don't ever go back and look at the last 10, 10 seconds of the video my door handle went and I was like oh probably looked like I'd pooed myself it's not a look I'm really looking for on a YouTube video I don't even know how it happened um, but we're one, we're still 1-0 up as half time approaches and it's another corner Iqbal looking to swing it in from this side my younger's there again but it, this time it goes just over he's not able to keep it down and it is just the one goal advantage as we go in at half time we're going to pump the fists tell the boys to go on and win the game in this second half. We are ahead on all the stats, but we were ahead on all the stats in the last game and we had an extra goal then too. So I am a little bit afraid that we're very capable of throwing it away like we did in that last game. We are approaching substitution o'clock as well um, where we're going to get the uh, the usual suspects back on the pitch. They've served their suspensions and they've done their time. Um, so Stanley can come on on the, uh, on the right-hand side. We'll move McKendy over to the left. And we're going to bring Spasov on up front and we're going to get Alfie Payne on into the midfield. And there you go. They've, they've had their time out of, the, out of the team. They're now back involved and hopefully going to go on and win the game for us today. If we if we end up throwing it away with those three players on the pitch again, at what point do we start to believe they're the three bottle jobs? Finding scapegoats in the heroes. Last year's top scorer and two legends of previous saves. They can be the scapegoats for us this season. Um, not that we need scapegoats. We're, we're, what, seven points off the top of the league with a game in hand. We're not quite top of the league like I threatened we could be, but we're still very much in the promotion mix and Spasov's in with his eighth goal of the season. How can we make that man a scapegoat when he's scoring at a goal a game so far this year, even when he's not starting every match to give the likes of Whitaker the odd opportunity here and there? But it's a big throw from Dunn. Who, that's two assists for Dunn today. Um, one from the corner, one from the spectacular throw. Um, and now at 2-0 with a few minutes left, surely we're not throwing this one away today. Part of me does think we perhaps should have finished it off a little bit sooner playing against 10 men, but a win is a win. I'm taking anything. Spasov's in again here and makes it three and makes it three in style. 89 minutes gone, 3-0 to Kettering. And that is a comfortable victory in the end. The scoreline, 
it, it looks a little better than the actual performance on the pitch was, but I'll take it. Um, I'll take the two goals from Spasov. Certainly dropping him out of the team seems to have woken him up. He wasn't this effective in front of goal in the last game. Robson needs to think twice before he comes into my office demanding to play again, though, because he hasn't looked anything special out there today. And Carvalho was very good in the previous game and got dropped out of the matchday squad entirely to accommodate Robson. So, hmm. We've got a lot of players who are very, a similar kind of standard. And I think we probably need to decide which ones are going to be my team and which ones we're maybe going to try and ship out of the club relatively quickly and trim this squad down so we don't end up with four or five players with a grumpy on because they never play, which is the the danger we've got at the moment, maybe. Mm. Right, we will go and do another half dozen games or so as we continue to insert ourselves into this promotion push in the National League, and that should bring us back just in time for the FA Cup to get up and running, which is a perfect time to come back. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.